I welcome you all to the second chapter of English grammar rocking with prepositions a topic which we have been learning since grade 2 but yes with every passing year the intensity of the topic has definitely gone higher now before we begin i want you all to look around the room that you are seated in right now and frame five sentences connecting two nouns basically giving me the relation between two nouns so for example the book is on the table or the bed is beside the window or the keys are in the drawer so very quickly take your paper and pen take your notebooks and a pen and write down five sentences about the position or the relation between two nouns now that we have understood how after after writing those five sentences we have somewhat understood what a preposition is what does a prepos- preposition do so a preposition is a word that indicates the relationship between a noun and the other words of a sentence they explain relationships of sequence space and logic between the object of the sentence and the rest of the sentence they help us understand order time connections and positions let's look at these few examples in front of us i am going to canada alex threw a stone into the pond the present is inside the box they have gone out of the window so you see the highlighted words the words which are in bold are the prepositions Now here are some interesting linguistic facts about prepositions. These are really interesting. You must uh, listen to it carefully. They are a closed class of words which means no new preposition gets added to the language. We use a fixed set of prepositions. So like in vocabulary, you keep getting new words and you know there are a lot of updates. But uh, when it comes to prepositions, it is a closed class of words. We have a fixed set of prepositions. You need to ap- uh, apply them accordingly. Prepositions do not have any other form. They cannot be plural, possessive, inflection or anything else. We cannot have fors and froms, you know. They are uh, they are just as they are. They don't have any other forms. most of the prepositions have many different contextual and natural uses so it is easy to be confused about prepositions well yes there are certain words where actually it seems confusing you don't know which word to use when for example if i talk of in or into now the key difference between in and into is that in indicates a state of being so the keys are in the drawer right so it's a state of being it is there whereas into indicates motion for example uh, it is often used to describe the movement of something from indoors to outdoors so she walked into the room so there was movement she came from out to in so that is where uh, quite a few times we get confused and lastly sometimes a preposition works as nouns adjectives and adverbs now there are a set of words which uh, can be used as a preposition as well as an adverb in fact we have this topic even further i'll just give you an example a hairy spider s- crawls across the dining table now here we have across but as a preposition L- the same word this river has no bridge we have to swim across now here the across is used as an adverb So yes there are certain number of words which uh, are where the prepositions can be used as nouns adjectives and adverbs too kinds of prepositions now like i told you earlier with every passing year the intensity of the topic rises likewise this year you are going to learn these different kinds of prepositions they are simple prepositions compound prepositions double prepositions participle prepositions and phrase prepositions 
Now, if you look at these sentences, these are some of the examples of one word prepositions. Like we spoke, there will also be compound prepositions, there shall be double prepositions. So here what we are talking right now is about one word prepositions. He began to sing aloud from an old song book. The train is now heading towards the tunnel. The mother called the three sons to divide the pizza among them and so on. You see these examples? All these highlighted words are your prepositions. Now, if we look at these three two-letter words, in, at, on, though they are very tiny, but if they are not understood properly, they can have, they can cause a lot of problems, as in your answers will be wrong. Now, if I take at, okay, now at is something which is at a particular point, like I was waiting for her at the station. So, you know, there's a particular place that you're allotting at some particular point. If you consider in, in the house, in a car, in a helicopter, in a boat, in an elevator. Now here what you are talking about is, you are talking about something closed, something which where you are inside something, right? So you are in a car. And if I talk of on, now it's on the corner, on a train, on a plane, on a ship, on a motorbike. So if you if you realize, if you've noticed that it they're all surfaces. So you are on them, right? You are on the surface. You're on the uh, on a train. So this is in, at, and on. This, these need to be very uh, you know specifically understood to get the right answers and to use them accordingly. All right. Now that we have understood the simple prepositions to a very good extent. Right. Let me see how good or how well you have understood the whole thing. Right. So if you look at this, it's a small exercise which you can do in a jiffy. It's the prepositions in the sentences below are incorrect. Now there is a highlighted word, a preposition in every sentence. You need to rewrite the sentences using a preposition which makes sense. Now let me do the first one uh, with you. The cat is sitting under the carpet. Now, what do you think? Is it possible? I mean, why would the cat be under the carpet, right? Unless it's hiding. But generally, the cat is sitting on the carpet. So the word under is wrong and you have to replace it with on. Likewise, the next two slides, this slide and the next slide, you're going to work out these sentences. Once you are done with all these sentences, Write them in a notebook and keep it handy so that we can discuss them in our next video. Here is another interesting activity for you. I'm sure you're going to enjoy doing this. So quickly, with your books and pen. Now, I, I want you to time yourself while doing this, all right? So give yourself 30 seconds maybe. Uh, I don't expect a really good, good drawing, perfect. Uh, shapes and figures but yes very roughly you can draw these uh, go as per these instructions and draw exactly the same so you need to draw a ball on the table draw a cat under the table draw a ball between two bottles draw an apple in a basket draw a boy behind a tree so you're going to do this quickly. Time yourself for every line, for every instructions. Give yourself 30 seconds and you should be done by then. So yes, come on. Let's pick your pencils and start drawing.